have a date with the angel. Starring Betty White. Bill Williams as Gus Angel. Presented by Limo. Star of the Forward Look. The Plymouth Dealers of America. The time, six months after Vicki and Gus Angel were married. The plot, it could have happened anywhere. The place, but it happened on a train. We haven't been out of the station in ten minutes, and I'm positively lightheaded. It's just getting away from that house. Well, remember, kids, now, this isn't exactly a vacation. You rang, sir? Oh, yes, I certainly did, waiter. Uh, I'd like uh, two beers and uh, two lemonades. Yes, sir. <laughs> Carl always was a big spender. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what I don't seem to get across to Dottie, Vicky, is that Gus and I are being sent to San Francisco so that John Calvin can give us the once-over. <laughs> us and our wives. You see, Vicki, San Francisco is the head office, and John Calvin is the head of the head office, and Mrs. Calvin is the head of the head of the head office. <laughs> so naturally, if the head of the head of the head office and the head of the head office don't like us, off go the heads of the pinheads of the branch office. <laughs> Oh, come on, kids, this is serious. Let's not giggle ourselves into unconsciousness. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Gus, will, will, will you tell them that our future with ex as executives of this company depends on the impression we make on Mrs. Calvin? My goodness, if, if she thinks we're married to a couple of screaming hyenas... <laughs> Mrs. Calvin does carry a lot of weight. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll suggest a nice diet for her. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you see, the reason they call Mrs. Calvin mother is, is because she's finicky about a lot of little things. At least that's what we heard. Now, being this is our first trip to San Francisco, we don't know what to expect. Well, we won't disgrace you, Gus. <laughs> Why didn't you stay and smoke it for her, Carl? Wrong brand. <laughs> oh, waiter, right here. The lemonade here, please, and the beers right here. Yes, sir. Lemonade for the ladies? Mm hmm Here for the gentlemen. Thank you. Thank oh, and uh, give the check to my friend here. He's on an expense account. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh-uh, Vicky, you mustn't use your fingers. You can't do that at the Calvin's. And it might be nice if we didn't chew tobacco until after the cocktail. <laughs> Good thought. Look, kids, let's not get stuffy, shall we? It's just that Mother Calvin likes a happy family. And John Calvin buys the idea that if his men come from happy families, they... Uh... Oh, they make better executives. Did you get her license number, Carl? <laughs> Don't be silly, darling. I, I was just thinking uh, how much better that dress she was wearing would look on you. In other words, uh, be yourself at the Calvins, but be careful, huh? That's it, that's it. Well, Gus, what do you think we're going to do? Walk in and sing three choruses of Red River Valley? Oh, that's very funny. Three choruses of Red... Look, if we seem to lean too much on this Calvin business, it's just because our whole... Well, thanks very much. No cream. I hope I didn't embarrass you, Vicky. But there are some things you just have to do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Oh, insanely jealous. How long does it take her to get over one of these things? Oh, Dottie is emotionally immature. Quick to anger and quick to laughter. She'll be over in about a week. <laughs> A week? We're meeting the Calvins in the morning. She's got to be over with her by tomorrow. Gus, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Gus, why are you so petrified of John Calvin? Me? <laughs> well, all week long I've been getting nothing but hints as to how I should act. If they have a cat, make a fuss over it. If they have a dog, don't mention a cat. If they serve fish, choke it down anyway. 
<laughs> Am I in the habit of embarrassing you? Have I been saying all those things? <laughs> you even told me not to mention gin rummy in case they don't drink. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie. Let's forget about the Calvin. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Sweetheart, what do you say we patch up the fight between Carl and Dottie? Well, that's their business, isn't it, sweetie? It's more important than you realize. We can't have Dottie showing up like this at the Calvin's in such a bad mood. Okay, sweetheart. Dottie, honey. Open the door, Dottie. I know you're in there. I can smell that book you put on your hair. <laughs> Dorothy, open this door. You hear me? You open this. Is there a lady in there? <laughs> well, now there is an open question. <laughs> Dorothy! Listen, mister, how'd you like to get put off of this train? And I might as well warn you, we're not going to make any stops. <laughs> Well, I might as well warn you that that happens to be my wife in there. Oh? Oh. Well, uh, try and keep your voice down, will you, friend? Yes. Yes, conductor, yes. Thanks. <laughs> Dorothy! <laughs> Dorothy! Dorothy, you open this door, I'm gonna tell your mother. What's the matter, Carl? Oh, she went and locked me out. And if she knows what's good for her, she'll open this door. Because I happen to have the ticket, and I'll have her put off at North Bakersfield. <laughs> what? Well, it's about time. Oh, <laughs> 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 just one. There's a note on the suitcase, Carl. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh she's brilliant tonight. <laughs> I read your message. Kipling, and it's not quite up to your Gunga Din. <laughs> what does it say? Read it yourself. <laughs> In case you're thinking of trying, I've also locked the windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just tell Miss Hair Curlers of 1918 that when she comes to her senses, I'll be in the club car. Catch it up now, Carl. You can't let us show up like this at the Calvin's. Oh, can't I? No, I well, can't. Will you forget the Calvin's? Carl, you don't want her like this for your own sake. Oh, that's right. You're not kidding. <laughs> when she adds a chin strap to those hair curlers, she... her head looks like an aluminum porcupine <laughs> swinging in a hammock. <laughs> you wait here. I'll see what I can do. Oh. <laughs> Dottie. Dottie, honey, it's Vicky. Uh, uh... Porcupine swinging in a what? <laughs> he didn't mean it, Dottie. Did you see the way he was taking inventory of that tall brunette? He isn't a husband. He's a, a chicken inspector. <laughs> I don't think he even knew he was doing it. If he tried to meet the girl, it'd be a different thing. But he never does. Does he? <laughs> Well, I'd worry a little if Gus didn't look at other girls once in a while. Of course, I'd take a dim view of it if he actually talked to them. After all, what harm can they do if, if they don't say anything? Carl doesn't have to say a word. He has the most talkative eyeballs west of Kansas City. <laughs> oh, that's more like it. <laughs> well, honestly, sometimes I, I hate myself for still being in love with that... that an aluminum porcupine swinging in a what? <laughs> a hammock. Hmm. Carl has such a flair for the obvious. <laughs> Who is it? Gus. Uh, why don't you girls meet us in the club car and finish your lemonade, huh? Okay. In a few minutes. Tell Carl to wear blinkers. <laughs> the girls are going to meet us in the club car in, in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I heard that last remark. 
Oh, look at this guy. Some people have no consideration for others. Now you've got to be an Olympic hurdler to get up and down the aisle here. No, we don't do things like that. <laughs> well, are, are, are these yours? Oh, yes, sir. I'm terribly sorry. I was just trying to rearrange the compartment. It's a little crowded with the nurse and the children and myself. Well, of course. Gus, get inside and help this little lady. These bags are too heavy for her to lift. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Well, how many how, how many children do you have? Oh, uh, three. Uh, my husband hasn't seen the baby yet. He's in the Navy. Oh, well, I hear the Navy's taking them pretty young these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put the heavy one on top, Gus. Shh, not so loud, Carl. Babies are trying to get to sleep. Oh, 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 oh. oh well, Jan, I see you don't need any help. Oh, no, these gentlemen came to my rescue. Oh, uh, this is my kid's sister, Mrs. Johannes Reeb. Oh, Mrs. Jo... Jo... jo uh, well, what do you say we just use first names? I'm Carl, and this is Gus. Oh, <laughs> fine. Well, I'm Janet, and this is Vivian. Yeah, oh, you do. Oh, thank you so much. Well, see you later. Right. You know, you girls are going to love San Francisco. My, it's a real fun town. I know. I work for the San Francisco Police Department. <laughs> Police department. <laughs> I see. See you later. You know, I, 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 I had a friend who was connected with the police force once. Yeah. By a pair of handcuffs. <laughs> well, I got a lot more of them, but I seem to be boring my friend. We'll see you girls later. Right, Bye. Well, uh, thanks again, Gus and Carl. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Pretty old uh, jokes, but nice guy. Yeah. Say, how about joining me in the club car, huh? Oh, I'd love to, but you know, I want to get the kids to sleep first, all right? You should have seen that girl, cute kid. I think you just got to see him. She just loves babies. <laughs> Honestly, Gus, you're such a chowderhead. Even you should realize that we don't even dare mention those two girls. To a wife, talking to a pretty girl is assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> All right. Oh, thanks again, fellas. Oh, well, oh, thanks aren't really necessary, but uh, if you get us anything, have it engraved. Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> well. I'm sure glad you patched things up. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> oh, here we are. Oh, well, hi, darling. No, no, don't come out. We'll sit out here. Well, well darling, how, how, how pretty you look. <laughs> we're, uh, we're not going to have any more trouble, are we? Are you big clown? <laughs> Have you ordered yet? Oh, uh, no, we just got here ourselves. We stopped to help a lady with her luggage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, poor old soul was having trouble lifting it. That was nice of you. Her son's in the Navy. <laughs> Charles, who cares? Well, it was just a figure of speech. Her son's in the... Oh, waiter. Uh, two lemonades, please, and two beers. Oh, are you gentlemen going to try it again? <laughs> waiter. Yes, ma'am? May I borrow a piece of paper and a pencil, please? Well, certainly. Thank you. You know, this is really a pretty club car, though. Oh, is that the suit you were talking about back there? Yes, that's the I saw that in Martin Dale's window. Don't you think maybe she's overdoing the friendly smile a little bit? Gus, <laughs> uh, don't be obvious, honey, but tell me what you think of this suit on this girl back here. I almost got one like it. <laughs> You're right. She's either friendly or she's very proud of her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, all unpacked, are we? <laughs> well, now, there's a question that came right out of left please. field. <laughs> well, tickets, please. Oh, <laughs> I have yours. Yes, sir. <laughs> Say, you sure do get around. <laughs> What a crazy mixed-up conductor. Oh, waiter, waiter, waiter. Here you are, sir. Two lemonades, please. And, yes, yes. and two beers. Yes, and you can give my friend the check again. <laughs> <laughs>
For a big train, they have awfully small checks. Mm. <laughs> you know, being on this club car reminds me of a wonderful story. This one fellow says to the other fellow, he says, do you believe in clubs for women? <laughs> and the other fellow says, only when they get out of line. <laughs> I don't know any Vivian. Do you know of... Oh, 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 B -B Vivian! Oh, that, 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 that's Clemson's sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, she, she runs a chinchilla ranch up near uh, 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 Tascadero. <laughs> oh, she's a very nice, a little on the skinny side, well, but she is... Well, Vivian sent you those and a note from a Tascadero. <laughs> she has quite a sense of humor. Dear Carl and Gus, <laughs> Sorry, but it's difficult to engrave beer. Vivian. <laughs> She's that girl over there. Well, don't just sit there. Thank her. a glass. Look, it just so happens that her name happens to be Vivian, and she happened to have crossed here a moment ago because she was helping this elderly lady lift this luggage up, and Vivian happened to come That's along. That's true. Uh, uh, this one is uh, with the police department. Let's mold our thinking a little, shall we, girl? Now, it happens to be true. This one is on her way to San Francisco. Vicky, you can sit and listen to this fairy tale if you like, but I've had all I can stand. Now, Dottie? Yes. <laughs> when I get to San Francisco, I may just kick Mrs. Calvin in her motherly shin. <laughs> <laughs> you know she'll do it, too. <laughs> I hate explanations, but I guess I'd better, huh? Yeah, I'd better. <laughs> Vivian really is uh, with the police department. Vivian? <laughs> when you first met me, you called me Miss Morgan for three weeks. <laughs> and you see, her real name is Mrs. Robamacher or Robamaker or something, and... Uh, Yes, and uh, she did happen to come along when we were helping her sister with her luggage. That's the elderly lady. Well, she did introduce her as her kid sister. That, that is uh, Vivian, and she does have these three children with her. Somehow it sounds a little more sensible without Carl around a mole thing. <laughs> all right, all right, you help the little old lady with her luggage, then what? Well, it's, it's oh, a long... Oh, never mind, honey. I... I didn't mean to sound suspicious. Honey, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, thanks again, Gus. kicking Mother Calvin in the shin. Wait till you see where I'm gonna kick her. Dorothy, open this door. I know you're in there. I can hear those corny curlers clicking. <laughs> Dorothy! Vicky, will you tell this ridiculous woman to... Vicky! Janet got into the act. <laughs> Georgie! Oh, come on, baby. Georgie, now I've had enough of this thing. When I married you, you told me. <laughs> I see you've taught your friend how to play knock knock, too. <laughs> Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. You're 
sorry. I didn't sleep a wink, honey. Carl! Out. I made him sleep in the upper berth for causing all this trouble. Come on, Carl! Back to Mama! Come on, back to Mama! What? Back to Mama! Are you kidding? She'll crack my clavicle. She's asleep, Carl. Oh. Oh. Greg? Yes, my little boy. He's disappeared. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> hey, are you Greg? Yes, sir. Where you been, son? I wanted to talk to the engineer, but they wouldn't let me. Yeah, you know, I used to do that as a kid, too. You know, your mommy's been worried about you. Now, you go in that compartment and stay there. Oh, Greg went up to see the engineer. He's safe and sound. He's in your compartment. Oh, God, thank <laughs> goodness. Oh, God, you're simply wonderful. but in a waiting room. I still think we ought to try to reason with the girls. Mm -mm. They let us sweat it out all night. I'm through crawling. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do you mean by that? There, you see? You know, if, if, if we knew what the Calvins looked like, it might help a little bit. Well, why don't you have them paged? Well, I'm glad I thought of it. Oh, don't look so glum, Gus. We'll try to brighten up before we meet your precious Calvins. We're not that awful. After all, we understand that... Oh, honey, look at this. Oh, look at that. How old is she? Oh, he. Three months. Oh, honey. Oh, hello, Gus. Hello, Janet. You know, I want to thank you for having such a very nice husband. I'm afraid I became a little hysterical last night when I thought that Greg was lost. I... I hope you understood. Oh, I didn't think a thing about it. <laughs> oh, just what's his name? Robert. John. You should have found out what they looked like. Yes, I, I know. I know. Oh. Look, John. Oh, darling. Look, isn't she sweet? How old is she? Oh, it's a he. It's oh. Three months. Oh, it's too pretty for a he. Yeah. Oh, look, look, there he is. There's Daddy. Oh, Hi, Daddy. Daddy. Oh, goodbye now. Goodbye. 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 See you girls love children. That's the good point in people. Oh. Are you just visiting here in San Francisco? Well, more or less on business. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Calvin. This is my husband, John Calvin. How are you doing? Oh, this is my friend Mrs. Koenig, and I'm Mrs. Angel. We're down here trying to find people that we don't even know. Mrs. Calvin. Hi, Mrs. Koenig. Oh. 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 Silly old woman, but I like John's people to be happy. And the minute I saw you smiling, happy couples, oh, I knew you belonged in the Calvin family.
Got a date with an angel, going to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on this same network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody.